For years now, fans of Christopher Nolan's inception have sought an answer to one question beyond all others, trying to find reason in that loaded final shot of Dom Cobb's totem spinning. Is he still dreaming? Was he dreaming the entire time? And in short, what exactly was that tiny wobble? Overall, what does this ending mean? But sometimes when you focus on one element, one that you've perhaps been led to focus on more than any other, you might miss the really important question that arguably matters more. In Inception, it's not whether Cobb is dreaming at the end of the movie that makes up our greater interpretation of Inception as a whole, but rather it concerns his position in the heist at its center. Considering everything isn't always as it seems then, I'm Ash from That Film Theory, and this is how Cobb is the real dream target in Inception. We're presented with the idea that Cobb is an Inception agent at the heart of this movie. He's hired by Saito to implant the idea that target Robert Fisher should break up his company, by suggesting that his father had intended to do exactly the same thing. In essence, the plan is to make Fisher give himself the idea by travelling deep enough into his subconscious that a simple form of this idea will take root. Crucially, the film establishes that the subconscious is governed not by reason, but by emotion, which is how the Inception is achieved and that positive emotion is far more effective. On first First reflection, the target is Fisher, and the targeter is his rival Saito, who seeks to break up his father's empire for his own gain. However, if we look a little deeper and peel back all those dream layers, there's a possibility that it's not Fisher at all, but Cobb who is the real target, with Miles seeking to incept an idea into his head to save him. That idea? That he needs to move on from his guilt at the death of his wife Mal and get on with his life rather than obsessing over it. The theory goes that Miles employs Ariadne to place the idea deep within Cobb's subconscious and that the key to her achieving that begins with a simple repeated phrase. Do you want to become an old man filled with regrets waiting to die alone. That phrase is first spoken by Saito during the initial conversation about incepting Fisher. Then within the first level of Fisher's dream as Saito lays injured from a gunshot wound, and then finally when Cobb finds Saito in limbo. With each utterance, the emotional context is heightened and the impact on Cobb is far more pronounced. Ariadne is the real key here though. Even her name is chosen precisely as a clue to her true nature. She is named for Ariadne, lover of Theseus, who helped him escape the labyrinth and the Minotaur. Literally Literally, the exact function she is employed to undertake by Miles to help save Cobb. Not only that, she also expressly tells Cobb that the deeper we go into Fisher, the deeper we go into you. She's not talking metaphorically because the heist is making Cobb confront his own complicated psychology, she's literally giving away her own plot. In an inception, the deepest level of the target has a safe where they keep their deepest memories and feelings, the place where the inception has to take place to really work, hence Fisher's implanted idea being placed in a safe. We don't see that with Cobb, but we do see a different form of safe, an emotional tomb of sorts that holds his most valuable memory, though it's a painful and toxic one rather than entirely cherished. We see that Cobb has created a series of flaws accessible by an elevator and each is defined by a moment he regrets and which is key to his own failed attempts to reclaim his life. He says he needs to change those memories, which is why he's locked them in permanently, but on the final forbidden basement level, he has locked away the memory of the last time he saw his wife alive. It might not be a physical safe, but the way he's trapped the idea works exactly the same way. The only way to penetrate that final level to get the idea into Cobb's subconscious is for Ariadne to break into it and transmit the idea. She has to achieve that through challenging what drives his entrapment, regret, partly by having Cobb speak to Mal and tell her that they did actually grow old together whilst they were lost in limbo. He is inspired to confront that idea by the implantation of Saito's mantra of becoming an old man filled with regret, waiting to die alone. Realising that he both doesn't want that, as Mal's project does, and that he lived a life of happiness with her already. Ariadne also symbolically kills Mal at the root of her toxic infection of Cobb, which ultimately also frees him. He has to come to realise that he is no longer at the mercy of her entrapment and that he can let his regrets leave him and move on. Even if the ending of the film suggests that he's still dreaming, it doesn't matter. What matters is that he's free of his regrets and has conquered his demons and can be with his children. Even if he's dreaming, he's metaphorically been woken up, and it's all thanks to that central inception.